This is the last cartel tool left in the toolbox. They now have to keep printing or we crash. We've got this ticking time bomb. Talking gold with the one and only Andrew McGuire. Welcome to Live from the Vault. Welcome to Live from the Vault. My name is Shane Moran and I'll be your host for this episode and from the entire Live from the Vault team worldwide. We want to thank you for your continued support and as you can imagine, this community keeps growing thanks to you, the Live from the Vault community worldwide now. So uh, there's a lot to talk about during these historic times and fear not because we have Andrew McGuire in the house and we'll be talking gold. This is going to be an amazing episode, so fasten your seatbelts, you know. Live from the Vault gives you access to information and updates that you just can't get anywhere else. And this episode will be no exception. And with that, let's head over to the UK and Talking Gold with Andrew McGuire. Now, Andrew, we've had a ton of questions related to the gold and silver market volatility. Uh, can we start off with what you're seeing right now in this wildly swinging gold and silver action? Yeah, and wild swinging it is. Yeah, Shane, um, you know, so I guess really we start with the last week we, with the, the, we saw the beginning of the unfolding of the banking crisis, which initially evidenced very short term bullish but clear price containment action in the metals. That was last week. Uh, and that was the head. That was just after the first bank collapse last Friday. Then we saw a little bit of a scramble to cover, and then it was followed by a full-blown spillover on Monday. Remember, they were panicking over the weekend, trying to find a solution. Um, and this, so, so basically, this leveraged paper market containment was overrun, as officials really intervened in all the market crosses, though, in an attempt to paper over the widening derivative chasm, and it is a chasm. Nevertheless, upside technical chart damage was inflicted in through that action, severely catching out and wrong-footed, the wrong, very wrong-footed paper market sellers that we've been talking about. But what was really important about this technical breakout of the 2023 capped ranges was that it incentivized central bank physical bidders to up their physical support levels which will change the market from a sell the rally market, which we've been experiencing all the way through February, to a buy the dip market. Now, we'll look at the cementing of higher stair step physical support levels shortly. But first, let's look at what officials are trying to gloss over here, because this is pretty, pretty wild stuff. Officials officially sanctioned uh, the Swiss government bailout of Credit Suisse. That was coordinated with the Fed, the BIS, really trying to stem a daisy chain collapse of the two big to fail banks underpinning a potential one quadrillion dollar derivative implosion. Um, and that triggered a race into gold. Go figure. And not only taking out the officially capped January 2023, uh, there were, it was a $1,975 was the high in January 2023. But it also took out the April 2020, uh, 2003, uh, 2003 dollar highs, which were the highs made just after the last, if you remember, the March 2020 Global Bank bailout. And these were the highs that were made after that. Now, look, these breaches have not gone unnoticed. And because what it's done, there was a lot of shorts, uh, short layers there which were just rinsed. Now this money didn't go nowhere. It was rinsed right out of, of this of the, of the short positions. Now, as part of the attempt to soothe the markets, obviously we, we immediately evidenced official interventions in all of the crosses, which when we talk about crosses, which in gold and silver, it's the paper gold markets basically. And, and obviously governments openly intervene in the in the FX markets all the time. They admit that they do. Uh, and so really was no surprise to see them and gold and silver are foreign exchange crosses. However, due to the fact that every day we've also been evidencing last deliverable, and remember we talked about T plus two, this is physical delivery. These are net, net stable funding um, uh, 
uh, uh, compliant uh, silver positions where you go into the fix, you, you buy that and you are, as of this year, you are forced to deliver those that, those, that bullion. And that is called T plus two, meaning that you buy it today, you will get delivery in two days because that is what NSFR regulations uh, force compliance of. So, so obviously when you lock in uh, these, uh, each, each uh, PM fix, um, you, you lock in these prices and they've been in the 1900s. So as these, you know, so as these paper to physical conversions flow through and ultimately hit the cartel, these central bank sovereign spot gold orders, and they are central bank uh, spot gold orders, have to be hedged, meaning short covered by the agent bank insiders exposed to delivery obligations. They are in absolutely no position to fulfill. So now we'll continue to see these physical delivery outflow flows into blatantly counterintuitive official efforts which we uh, which we've been seeing and they've been you know the efforts are to intervene as they attempt to spin that look all is well in la la land i mean goodness me anyone that that cares to look under the surface will will realize that is not the case a rising gold price though is a barometer that all is not well after all and to reaffirm other reports that we've been getting right across the, uh, the, the globe that officials have been actively intervening in all of the crosses in a globally coordinated mandate to try and keep bellwether gold from undermining their efforts. Footprints since Monday evidence gold and silver being sold into a declining dollar index. Now that is the inverse of what you would expect because there's a cross there. And we talked about this before, and it's usually inverse. And this time, the dollar was crashing on Monday, on Tuesday, and today on Wednesday, when we were recording this, the dollar was actually declining, and gold and silver were either declining or being capped into that. So it's so obvious. These intervention efforts rely, though, on paper gold being sold, a short sold, but once again, limited to rinsing the margined CTA longs. These are the speculators who never take delivery and who always race on board as, as, uh, as the, the right price rises. But in this case, they raced on board as the crisis unfolded. So, but while officials try and spin this, a risk on sentiment back again, not everything's fine, uh, invest in risk, invest in stocks to force these very same CTAs who'd race into safe havens to then dump these positions in favor of risk, it is serving to incentivize strong competing safe haven physical demand, which continues to be reported since last Friday. Now, when netted out of the sticky CTA longs, these are the guys that are in for the long haul, the resulting paper market backfilling, which is what we've been evidencing, will run out of weak-handed speculators to rinse. And ultimately, this is going to be helpful in cementing a higher stair step that we've been looking to discern a level around above 1900. Now, obviously, this is something that's unfolding. So into the official paper market interventions, the physical gold and silver markets in Asia continue to reflect a strong safe haven appeal into what is undoubtedly a global bailout of an extremely fragile broken banking system. It is perceived that many more banks exposed to liquidity issues will be exposed over the next few sessions. And while the mainstream media assisted globally coordinated efforts to prop up the large too big to fail banks is front and center, under the covers, it is the regional banks who actually provide over 80% of all lending that still expose these too big to fail banks to a potential domino collapse effect. Now, currently, the FDIC at maximum uh, only has around 2% in the kitty to cover all these bank deposits. So invoking emergency measures, which they've been discussing to back up the FDIC to cover all 
uh, uh, all um, uh, deposits. What's that? What's that? that's going to do? It's going to trigger a massive inflow into gold, bonds, and all safe havens. You can't hide these footprints. And despite official efforts to interfere in the crosses, the gold is gold is set up very similarly. We talked about this the last two or three times. Very similar to when it commenced a twelve hundred dollar rally in October two thousand and eight, which was another. But this crisis is even worse. Look, also, silver will be dragged up higher by gold, um, draining deeply underwater COMEX and global inventories in silver, uh, which are really thin, breaching short stops. Now, these short stops are bets that were made against silver, and they are margined, and it's these same speculators, in this case, who have no ability to deliver these positions, will actually be rinsed of this position. And it, there is sufficient size stops, i.e. buy orders, to get out of these positions to breach the all-time May 1st, 2011, $49 highs. Well, like Andrew, last time um, that we spoke two weeks ago on this episode, you drew attention to the central bank sovereign physical demand. And as you put it, you were saying it was raising uh, the physical support stair step and, um, and, and it enabled you to confirm that the last stair step here was 1820. So that was guaranteed uh, to hold, which it did, of course. Uh, can you update us on where are we on this stair step? Yeah, really, really happy to share this, Shane. This is, this is unfolding as we speak. And as we discussed in our last episode, following, and bear in mind, that was a $200 higher central, board, central bank physical support stair step which had risen from the November uh, 2022 lows. And that was cemented, as we said, at 1820. We said that live. Now, which, as we were re-recorded last episode, that was hard tested as we, as we recorded it by officials. We knew then, though, that it would hold. And it was going to, because it was going to trigger the central bank sovereign bids we reported were sitting there to be hit. And they were hit forcing insiders to scramble to short cover, which is why that level held. Now, if 1900 now becomes underpinned by these same central bank sovereign demands over $80 higher than was evidenced into the March 18th lows, then we should expect the all-time uh, 2090 level uh, to, to be hard tested. Now, being proven as the uh, as as the fresh competing um, central bank sovereign physical aggregated support level, looking ahead, footprints now suggest that somewhere between 1900 and 1920 level is now be beginning to be underpinned by these same competing central bank sovereign demand uh, buyers, which would be at least $80 higher than was evidenced into the March um, 8th lows. Just two weeks ago, that was. Now, actually, backfilling to this level would actually wipe out all the fickle money uh, with all the remaining uh, paper market interest um, with, because what is left is going to be very long-term and sticky. And we've spoken to some CTAs who are just piling in and saying, no, no, we need to, we need to hedge this, this exposure. So they won't be rinsed. And so this stair step support rally point indicates we should expect the all-time um, 2090 April 2020 highs uh, from the last March 2020 banking crisis to be hard tested and blown right through. Um, this is the most significant bullish for gold development since the long-term capital uh, situation blew up over 20 years ago when gold was at 250 bucks, triggering what is now referred to as Brown's Bottom. Now, we covered looking into this chasm statement by the Bank of England Governor Eddie George in a recent episode that we did. But here we are again, dancing over a paper over much larger one quadrillion dollar derivative chasm exposing a far worse crisis and gold will once again be the benefactor now now andrew before we started recording here today you were discussing how the gold revaluation process is likely to roll out uh medium term more medium term can you can you share us what you were talking about here this is pretty interesting 
Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, obviously the global bailout of the banking crisis, albeit being glossed over, has accelerated the gold revaluation process. And with this in mind, we'll start by looking at what we see the liquidity providers are doing for their first tier clients, sovereigns and central banks, as we head into the end of this quarter and how they're positioning for the second quarter, which is really important under this smoke and mirrors, ridiculous counterintuitive paper action. Now, we will look at the very short term picture shortly because that's important, too. But let's look at what's on the front burner involving where the medium and long term money is actively positioning and and really and the perfect storm really of the banking crisis. If we put even put that aside in the bigger picture, this is actually all about positioning for an acceleration of the de-dollarizing process, which as we're going to outline, steps up significantly following this week's meeting between President Xi Jinping and President Putin in Russia. Now, what is officially on the agenda is China's proposed peace settlement for what both nations assess as a proxy war between the US and Russia. However, it is realized any such proposal is extremely unlikely to be adopted by uh, Zelensky's US handlers. However, our well-connected Russian wholesale gold market contacts tell us this meeting is actually primarily focused on cementing alliances to hedge against an increasingly confrontational U.S. military complex. It's worth drilling down a bit here because this is pivotal. This is historic. Following Xi's re-election and with a fresh mandate to bolster alliances with Russia, this has been the first opportunity for China's president to meet with Putin to crystallize and restructure what is currently informal financial and military alliances with Russia. In other words, regardless of the outcome of the peace settlement being agreed or not, the geoeconomics of multipolarity is just moved onto the front burner in serious form. Please be aware, though. Look, I just have to make this statement. We are not taking sides with Russia, China, Ukraine or anyone. We're simply providing an informed insight beneath the PSYOPs narrative into why and how gold will be revalued in dollar terms and what is actually accelerating that process. This is a focus on how following weaponization of the dollar and following the Afghanistan debacle, a weakened, overstretched, woke U.S. military headed by the most woke U.S. president in history, how it's being perceived, meaning the dollar has become a toxic asset for two thirds of the globe and the anti-dollar is weaponized physical gold. It's that simple. Russia has openly expressed its view that the U.S. interference in Chinese internal affairs are unacceptable. And in particular, regard, obviously that's in regard to Taiwan sovereignty. And as Voice of America, um, uh, I think here, I've got it here. Yeah, Voice of America, what they reported last week was that China's growing pessimism over its relationship with the U.S. is making Beijing prepare for a future war it would rather not fight. Well, while it's true that China is not seeking war, the U.S. is openly ramping up its overall military presence in the Asia-Pacific. So in response, China is openly preparing for a future conflict. Having not ruled out invading Taiwan but adamant it will defend its sovereign territory in the face of U.S. interference, China is openly preparing for war. And back in October, Chinese President Xi appointed his war cabinet in response to U.S. military officials openly discussing their plans for a future war with China. Are these guys crazy? In indirect response, President Xi has implemented the largest military buildup since the Second World War and is mobilizing the civilian population for war. Now, this is interesting because this could mean potentially providing access to the additional over 25,000 tons of gold held by citizens who could be rewarded by participating in a significantly higher gold price. This could be deployed. 
This means he has to sanction proof his regime for an increasingly weaponized dollar. So he needs to do this. The, this process is underway and will place a strong bid under physical gold. And if the COMEX centric paper market does not follow the, 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 the physical price that so in other words, if they sell undeliverable futures contracts to try and cap gold into this unfactored swap of dollars for gold, the COMEX will be drained of all its leverage NSFR compliant bullion through the EFP conduit. If you remember, EFP conduit is simply where we have an undeliverable uh, COMEX futures contract that can actually use uh, this particular EFP conduit to move it into the spot markets in the UK and actually then it becomes forced to be deliverable. So they're caught between a rock and a hard place here. What is unstoppable is that, is that militarily China is now formalizing its alliances with Russia, which will increasingly mean supporting it in its proxy war with the US, which they all know will risk US sanctions against China, meaning that the real battle will be fought against extremely vulnerable US dollar hegemony. That, that's really what this battle is going to be fought over. And to give an idea of scale, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, which is called the BRI, now opens, it opens up the Central Asian Corridor, providing sanction-proofed overland connectivity between Iran, Turkey and China, allowing Russian and anticipated upcoming China sanctions to be completely sidestepped. Now, the linking of these multipolar powers really streamlines the process and allows China to play a much stronger hand. Look, this is not factored in. So with the multipolar land bridge now opened, China is looking to step up the de-dollarizing as quickly as possible. But to do so requires an alternative currency. Hence, the first port of call was Russia with a view to rapidly uh, accelerating the designing and implementation, uh, implementation of a multipolar-backed gold commodities-based currency, bypassing the US dollar, servicing the EAEU, uh, the Shanghai Cooperation uh, Organization, the SCO, the BRICS Plus alliances. Look, they're all. all it'll be it'll be configured to to uh, adopt or the, to allow them to adopt the same currency design backed by gold. Now, singularly, each of the nuclear super superpowers have the ability to eradicate each other overnight. So ultimately, restraint will have to be exercised. Now, what this means is that the nuclear option will be played out in the financial markets. And the stronger, the stronger hand power lays with two thirds of the globe that are divesting dollars as fast as they can to hedge against a unipolar US military and its lifeblood financial hegemony. Now, China has closely studied how, at the inception of the Russia-Ukraine military operation, that the weaponization of the US dollar froze billions of dollars of Russian central bank assets without warning, uh, something that has been clearly being prepared for um, uh, uh, with a US telegraph conflict with China. And it was the speed of this that the, the dollar was weaponized against Russia that has incentivized a move by China and the BRICS central bank's bank to quickly step up their already implemented de-dollarizing process. Now, wrongly, the blinkered mainstream media pundits continue to underestimate the scope of de of this de-dollarization timeline. Uh, still assuming erosion of uh, dollar liquidity will take many years to impact that trade. And so, therefore, are not even paying much attention to it. However, they fail to account for these anti-sanction developments, which alongside an extremely wrong-footed Fed, which is concurrently causing irreversible damage to the debt-based banking system, these efforts to de-dollarize will at the margin trigger a major dollar crash, we think within months, certainly within this year. Now, bottom line, China perceives the breach of the Russia's red line warning to NATO as a deliberate act by the US military complex to commence a proxy war against Russia with the objective of affecting 
uh, which they subsequently admitted what they were doing was attempting a regime change. We've heard them admit that. We've heard that in the UK. We've heard that in America. Uh, we've heard that in Europe. However, what, <laughs> what has China's attention was the speed at that Russian assets were frozen. And given China's Taiwan red line is now being increasingly prodded and tested, Xi Jinping is seeking to hedge China's exposure. That's what's happening now. And just to reaffirm, this look under the covers has nothing to do with taking sides. This is simply a look beneath the single Russia bad, Ukraine good narrative and how to best position ourselves against this fallout. What is sad, though, is that both sides end up as cannon fodder into this US-triggered proxy war against Russia, whose anti-woke regime poses a major obstacle to the implementation of the outlined WF, WEF globalist agenda. Clearly, that's what this is about. And as the US increasingly challenges China's Taiwan sovereign rights, ramping up the chance of a military conflict in the South China Sea, um, and, and with both Russia and China acknowledging, acknowledged as military enemies of the US, China now seeks to hedge the potential of a similar US-invoked red line being crossed against them. It looks inevitable. Obviously, opting out of dollars requires opting into an alternative currency, liquid enough, to act as an alternative to the dollar. And that is what Xi Jinping and Putin's meeting is focused on. And while this new currency is also, also utilizes the yuan, it does incorporate physical gold, hence stepping up the accumulation of gold through mining, acquisitions, and then of course, don't forget, robbing the LBMA CME leverage ring fence to back this new medium of exchange. This is really what is being discussed in Russia as we speak. Now, unlike the US dollar, which has a minimum minimal backing of gold, both Russia and China hold very large gold reserves, which are already of sufficient size, at least, uh, I mean, at a real supply demand uh, determined price. This is this is not this is not paper prices to ultimately back this alternative gold commodity based currency. So. So when China says they're preparing their citizens for war, it's not so much boots on the ground to fight wars. I mean, that's not what happens in wars. The, any, I mean, but we would not rule out the PBOC equitably accessing the over 25,000 tons of privately held gold to provide liquidity. So when aggregated with estimated combined, completely undisclosed, secretive Russian, Russian and Chinese central bank reserves, it could provide a pool of over 60,000 tons of physical gold to back such a gold-backed commodity currency. So anyone who thinks that that is not immediately available to Russia, China, and incorporating using US citizens, uh, the Chinese citizens to actually bring, this is war measures. The, Russia has prepared their people for war. They've openly said so. And given the physical, that physical gold from an internal mine supply, along with this T plus two spot gold delivery demand at the diluted COMEX futures price, LBMA spot gold fixes, which we have noted increasingly every day over the last few weeks, is both exiting these, these this physical demand is both exiting the uh, the LBMA CME ring fence, but it's also being scooped up by the Russia-China alliance, flowing into the Russia-China mandate to back this new currency. So at the margin, as we highlighted in our last episode, it's forcing the decoupling of the primary high-frequency trading capping tool, which is, as we've talked about, the dollar index, that the inverse relationship, um, finance, FX relationship between the dollar, gold and silver, because they're, they're foreign exchange currencies. So you're long one, you're short the other. And really, that's what we see in the collapse of the decoupling of that relationship. And taking delivery and integrating weaponized gold to back a new global trade settlement currency will increasingly undermine. This is the last cartel tool left in the toolbox. It's going to be undermined. 
This is the tool that has, since Nixon closed the gold convertibility window, triggered one-to-one, algo-driven CTAs to synthetically sell futures contracts into a rising dollar. Decoupling this tool has become, has actually begun, something we've had multiple examples of since we drew attention to it in our last episode. Currently intermittent, but going not going unnoticed by central bank buyers. Andrew, thanks a lot for looking at the big picture there, medium and long term. But you know what? This week we have had a ton of questions on what is Andrew McGuire seeing in the short term here? Yeah, and, and of course, now we're recording this just before M- uh, FOMC. It's in a few hours from now. So, you know, well, we don't need to. We don't need to know. What we need to look at is what are their options? Um, so in the, in the bigger ch- picture, uh, if we looked, if we look at how the lack of Fed trust keys into the fresh race into into safe haven gold, it, reveal, it reveals an increasingly offside, wrong-footed Fed-driven psyops operation, which, if you remember, had raced into sell borrowed physical gold from the BIS in an attempt to avert central bank and sovereign physical buyers once again raising these aggregated bids above freshly established stair step central bank physical support levels, which was at 1820, and they're trying to avoid them being settled in the low 1900s. And as we just outlined, given the the current central bank support stair step at 1820 had in less than three months risen $200 higher from the 1618 lows uh, that we saw in November, The Fed was trying to block this fresh stair step at 2000. This is what was happening this week, which will force actually a very strong series of fresh supports to be established. So that's what they were trying to do. But again, as we discussed in our last episode, and I just have to sum it up here again, because it is the exact reason why the cartel will from here on be limited to the degree they can cap paper gold being alchemized into physical outside the LBMA CME ring fence. Namely, when competing central banks and sovereign physical demand sees this bullion exit the containment ring fence, it eliminates the cartel's ability to finance it, reborrow it, and then lease it back out into the, lease out this, this bullion, which they've been doing for, 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 for the last 50 years, Obviously, always financed by officials who have, who can print as much money fiat supply as they want to, to, to finance these positions. But if the bullion's gone, they can't do it. So this for decades has served to obscure the real, true supply demand data. Now, the effect of ultimately de-dollarizing two-thirds of the globe's commodity trade will weigh heavily on this primary cartel tool. Now, official put, put pushbacks, as we have just witnessed, simply forces the paper price to dip below global central bank uh, f- central bank physical demand levels. And while the Comex gold is leveraged, the physical buyers s- circle in to convert this paper price to physical offtake, and that is has a has a huge inverse inverse leverage. There is not what the, the cartel wants to see, but it's happening. Very short term, we're trading lower than the fresh 2023 Monday highs, which were made at around $2,014 uh, on Monday. And even though we've evidenced this fickle paper market longs being rinsed out since then, I say good riddance to them. It is the competing central bank sovereign physical demand that will once again change the sell the rally paper market chart painted by the Fed through February into a buy the dip market as the higher physical supported stair steps we were discussing last time begin to get underpinned by the physical market at a higher level. And if you recall, footprints were already evidencing the accumulation of very large unleveraged central bank and sovereign T plus two spot gold delivery demand, sucking up this alchemized gold sold into the, this ill thought through US centric psyops operation that commenced at the beginning of February. Now, while some of this fickle, rinsable paper market interest also participated into the gold price ramp into the 2000 level, at the margin, 
It is this NSFR compliant T plus two spot gold delivery demand exiting this LBMA CME ring fence that has ultimately been forcing discipline on the cartel banks to hedge this physical exposure, triggering a sequence of layers of paper market short stops to be rinsed, but ultimately limiting downside traction because of that. Now, by Friday and further cemented this week, the central bank's sovereign higher stair step supports we were drawing attention to in our last episode also looks to be resetting from the 1820 spot level to what looks like just above 1900 right now. But this is a rapidly evolving uh, situation as gold supply tightens enormously here. The longer gold holds above this freshly aggregated central bank bid level, and we've seen several uh, PM fixes now above 1900, these higher stair steps will continue to populate limiting the scope of the cartel's paper market activity. This is full circle back to the evolving paper to physical battle lines we've been tracking for years here, where the paper to physical lines cross is the, is the important point, And we know it is the physical market that ultimately provides discipline to the casino pit managers. So bottom line, bottom line, the financial crisis is most certainly not over, despite this glossing over, evidencing a scramble by global officials to avert any one of the daisy chain of the two big to fail banks collapsing. And if any one of them goes, it would force having to mark to market close to a one quadrillion dollars of interconnected derivative bets to zero. To avoid a total banking collapse, massive QE, will have to be implemented, which will be another factor to drive gold, silver, and all commodities priced in dollars to all-time fresh highs. It's not that the commodities are priced, uh, have moved up in price, it's that the amount of dollars it takes to buy them will be more. It'll require more. So while the paper market focus is on FOMC later today, and that is very short term, the Fed, faced with a potential 2008 or 2020 like bank run caused by the Fed driving rates too high too fast will have its hands tied. If they increase rates too much, it's just going to create this uh, another another uh, another fallout. So, but to save face from flip flopping again by pausing immediately, which would also actually send a message, uh, they know something. Uh, the market doesn't know yet about a worsening bank contagion. So the Fed is kind of trapped between hiking 25 basis points, pausing or just commencing full bore QE. Well, guys, you will know by the time you get this uh, episode. But this is this is basically what we're looking at. But look, let's just say this is what Goldman said. So this is what I think caught my attention yesterday. It, they said Fed either pivots too early and turns dovish into high inflation scenario, which fairly bearish for the US dollar, thus helping gold, or they pivot too late and cause a much bigger recession than is priced right now, resulting in a flight to safety helping gold. A Goldman's take. Um, and you know damn well they're long for their own book. Uh, there's only one safe haven asset, though, guys, you can protect ourselves with, any of ourselves with, and that is... The question is, <laughs> how much physical gold and silver do you own right now? Thank you, Andrew McGuire, for talking gold. And to remember to all of our Live from the Vault community, buy physical, buy physical. Make sure it's one-to-one. Understand what the difference between what Andy affectionately calls the casino paper gold and silver markets and the actual physical gold and silver markets. They're not the same. Don't be fooled. And there you have it. That's all we have for you today on another episode of live from the vault please help spread the word about this channel by hitting that like button right now and sharing it with everyone you know and also subscribe if you want to be notified in real time as each episode goes live be sure to hit that little bell there and you will be notified and with that we'll see you right here next time on live from the vault see you then